Okay, this is OK here, and we're going to watch Grandmaster Yasuseroan playing Crazy House against International Master of Awaisen. And I believe this is the seventh video of this kind uh, that, I've, um, that I'm going to be doing. Um, and you can see all the rest of the videos on my YouTube. Um, because we're joining slightly late in game nine, We'll, we'll just spend um, the first few minutes having a look at uh, the earlier games in the series. So game one. Uh, so we're going to be looking um, with from the point of view of Yasser Serowan. Um, so we've got a nice London system with game one. Knight swings into e5, and Yasser going for an h4 push. Um, Okay, Opa taking that bishop, and yeah, already black has a nice advantage actually. Um, so it turns out taking the bishop on d6 is better than taking back the rook, which is interesting. Because now the bishop is looking at e3, and there's a sack on e3, which is on, um, although Opa didn't take it. Okay, so. Okay, so a crazy attack on h7, um, and really some nice initiative. So it turns out that knight is poisoned and shouldn't be taken. The the key idea in the position for Opa is to sack on e3, but um, uh, some nice initiative from Yas, a nice attack. g6 is now free, a g6 square for a knight or something to come in, um, and it comes in, yeah, somehow. Okay, but this e3, okay, so he's trying, he's trying to hit on g6. Now, what should white do here? So it turns out knight takes f5 is a good idea, um, followed by picking up the knight. So let's see if we saw that. No, so that was missed. Um, still, taking on g4 seems to be an idea in this position. Okay, but instead, he's going for building these very long pawn chains into the position. Um, and actually, yeah, again, yas has got big initiative here, but the key move is knight at g3, because the rook is kind of trapped. Um, so if knight at g3, he presumably just uh, just takes rook takes some... Rook takes would be fairly... Okay, so although the rook looks like it's hanging... Hmm. Uh, so the rook is dangerous, because a rook on h7 is mating. That's, this is why this is a kind of dangerous idea. So I see that's why you, you can't just sack the rook. So pawn at h2, um, king h1. Uh, he's desperate to get rid of this, so the, uh, of this pawn. And um, rook takes. So okay, sorry, you don't even get rid of that bishop. That rook is the the key. It takes the rook. Um, this pawn is still well defended. So bishop g8. So this would be the kind of position. Um, then you take the knight, and yeah, so white is actually, you can see no black pieces on his side of the board, apart from that pawn which is falling soon. So that would have been really dangerous. Um, so Yasa missed that move instead of playing this, and this, that, I think this is a critical point in game one. Um, because now it's, with his little trick, it's now uh, black, uh, now at this point Yasa resigned because uh, He's got in on the back rank. King takes a pawn will drop on h2. You can try and run either way, but a rook is landing on g1 as checkmate. So um, knight takes. That was a key mistake because it allowed it. The knight was a key defender. Um, so taking the bishop was not. Yeah, taking the bishop back was not on the cards. So just a single move earlier, knight at g3 was winning. Strong, strong, strong. But knight, knight here, that can just be taken, taken, check, taken again, and that cannot be taken back. Taking it back led to the mate. Um, and rook at g1, mate. Okay, so that was game one. Game two, now looking again from Grandmaster Yasser Serowan's perspective. Um, so Opa playing this bishop g5 system. Um, yeah, I don't like having these, these doubled f pawns. They're, they're a little bit ugly. Um, and 
so yes, it's trying to get some compensation by, um, by well, creating two pawns together, because two pawns together is a powerful force. So that's quite an interesting, yeah, g5 is a nice, okay, so he defends the pawn, um, and he's developing his pieces, so his kingside for the moment is staying safe. Um, but this feels like a wasted foray. Um, I'll just go back a second. He goes here, defends, has to go back again. Um, I don't know, he's he's spent two moves doing that, whereas white only spent one playing this move. So that's a, that's a wasted tempo for sure. Um, although bishop reroutes itself to hit f5. Not sure. Maybe why would it want, why would it do that? Maybe Oppa was thinking about the push at some point. But any anyway, um, so okay, very kind of positional stuff from both players, trying to rearrange their pieces. Okay, who's going to break first? Takes, takes, and push. Okay. Okay. So Yasa goes for Yasa actually in this position was doing fine with a move like c takes d4, knight takes d4, pawn at h3, for example, or um, knight at f3 check just straight away. That seems very ambitious. Um, but okay, instead he goes for a little bit of a peace sack. Um, and it does not pay off. Check, king has to go here, takes the rook with check, bishop here, check, rook here, check, and uh, the game's all over because the king comes here, rook takes f7 with check, uh, king e6, and a pawn at d5. You can't push d5 because the rook would cover, but pawn at d5 is checkmate. So, wow, that was a really fast mating attack um, for not taking that knight. Check, takes with check, bishop here, check, rook here, rook here, and pawn here. So bishop, rook, and knight. I mean, that's a fast mating attack. I'm going to start that. Okay, going now to game three. Um, um, okay, so so far seems very reasonable, uh, but the interesting point is this sa the sack one f seven, and uh, very nice. The computer likes it a lot. Um, king is exposed. You're picking up a second pawn for your efforts. It's almost mating. Feels almost mating. Not quite, but. Um, so you're thinking of a second pawn, you're likely going to get a third pawn as well. Okay, so knight at h4, he defends g6. So g3. So the idea of this is if the knight did gobble, then king goes here and the knight's got nowhere to run to, so you are just picking up the piece. So we do see this. Uh, the bishop now has to defend this pawn. He picks up the piece for the pawn. So yeah, this is really nice from, from Yasser as white. Um, although we'll see that Oppa won this third game as well. Uh, so he's putting up the pressure on g6, very nice. g5 protecting the queen. Um, so interesting. So this might have been g5 is nice. Even sacking on h5 is possible. Um, oh, g5 is nice. So the computer really likes just sacking on here because you take back and you, you dump a bishop on, on here maybe. Uh, you dump a pawn on here, and you have great initiative. Um, and the king is just about safe because he, he's um, it's a little bit dangerous. Because but the knights are covering all the key squares. Um, so yeah, apparently white white is actually in control. So g4 was good. It also quite likes at g5. So the point is the queen is poisoned, um, not poisoned, but yeah. Again, it just feels that black. White's got more initiative here, so the computer likes this. Although again, it looks very dangerous. Um, I mean, knight takes g6, bishop takes, knight takes, and then you've got a pawn to finish. Does It does look, yeah, it does look. So a diagonal is dangerous, basically. Um, so why not at g4? That seems reasonable. Uh, and then take the bishop. So he does do that, takes the bishop. And bishop at f7 would have been strong, but okay, he's going for a little bit of defense, which is reasonable. Um, and here he has knight g6 check and picking up the rook. 
practically for free, and that's almost all over. So just click, keep it staying safe. Knight takes knight, knight here check, takes, 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 bishop here, uh, pawn here, bishop takes pawn, king, king takes rook here. Okay, and I think this is a key move. Um, yeah, I think this is a very key move in game three. He went pawn at f2, which seems completely reasonable. But now black has mate in 16. Um, now this is quite shocking, but the only winning move here is actually to do king h1, losing the queen with check. You don't usually want to walk into losing the queen with check. But the point is, black has nothing. Knight takes. There are no checks. Uh, f1 is covered. Um, there's queen at e4 is the only check. Uh, white's got a ton of material in hand. Um, queen at f3, for example, or even a rook at f3. Um, and and uh, white's attack is going to come through. But what's wrong with pawn at f2? This seems perfectly reasonable. So it turns out Oppa found the, the winning combination. Mate in 10 now, it says. Queen takes bishop, takes. Pawn g5 check, comes back, because if you go to king h4, you're going to get rook takes h7 check. Um, that's also going to look very dangerous. So he comes back. G takes knight with check. Okay, if he steps back, then knight, knight at h3 and pawn at g2 is going to be mate. So he takes it. What else could he do? King h3 is also possible, but that also gets mated in the end because the rook comes in. Um, so he takes it. Bishop at g4 checks, steps back. Okay, that knight is going to be mating now. Knight at e3. Um, king has to go here or here, and he's picking up the queen with check, and queen at g2 is checkmate. So, wow. What a finish from Oppa in game three. That's a definite, definite star. Okay, now looking to game four, and... Uh, Opera as white, so we're looking from the point of view of Grandmaster Saruman, but Opera as white. Um, okay, let's turn the analysis on. Yeah, Opera as, is white, but so we've seen the first few games. Uh, actually, Saruman does quite well in the middle game, but sometimes Opera gets these very fast attacks. Um, and yes, it doesn't always defend accurately when the tactics get very sharp. Um, so we'll see here what happens. Right here. So, so yeah, so knight taking f3 is good, taking h3 is good. Um, but yeah. So actually, offers is actually he has he has a really solid king. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> a little um, castle around his king, um, and I think his attack is slightly faster. Um, maybe a move he should play here is knight takes e4 because you're you're going to pick up this knight, which is the only kind of threatening piece. In, in the position, um, and that may also be a key attacking. Uh, so you, he, Black can't go bishop takes, I don't think, Bec uh, and indeed, yeah, he can't because that bishop is a key defender. Uh, there will be moves like rook here, king takes rook, then drop um, a pawn at g7. If you come up here, rook here is mate, so you try and run, but there's simply rook here, check, king here, rook here, checkmate. So that bishop's a key defender. So that would have been an interesting idea, taking the pawn with the idea of taking um, the pawn with the idea of taking the bishop. Uh, you could try taking this one, but then that's also mating. Because knight on knight at g5 is coming with check. Uh, you could pick up the queen, but you're actually mating in that line um, because knight at g5. Again, if the bishop takes the knight, you're in trouble. So the king has to step back. If king steps back to here, pawn at h7. If king steps back to here, um, 
pawn at g7 is mating, but even stronger is rook at f8. And he can block, but you have a second rook, and the second rook you've got on h7. So it's a very pretty little mate. Um, so I guess this is a key idea missed um, by offer. This knight takes e4, but um, instead he goes knight g5, hitting this bishop. So as you've seen, this bishop's the key piece. Um, queen takes... Knight takes f3. Okay, queen takes f3. So why does he do that? Knight takes f3, queen takes f3. It's a forced mate for white that Opera is, is actually executing here. Um, take, well, he, he doesn't execute it in a completely forcing way. Um, so knight at g5 is mating in the same way as we just saw earlier. Um, but he, he goes knight at f8 and takes the queen and he's safe and there's no coming back for Yasser in game four. Game five. Uh, looking from the point of view of Yasser Sarawan, as usual, in this particular uh, video. Um, sometimes I switch between videos, but um, especially if Opera can join me in voice chat, I try and look from his perspective. Um, but it's it's evening in Holland. Uh, both players are in Holland playing, playing this. Um, okay, so quite creative. Um, quite creative opening play from, I wonder what Stockfish makes of this. Um, g4 push. It thinks it's interesting. Um, and it quite, it's not, uh, it is appreciating the results. Okay, so this is Grandmaster Sauron, I think, trying to copy Opera from the last game and create some kind of um, interesting castle with his king on h1 and then break through. Um, it's interesting. But I think, I, I feel like he, a lot of those pieces have been eaten up and Black seems to be doing okay despite what Stockfish says. Um, but obviously, he, yeah, the castle is reformed, and okay, white seems to be dominant here. Um, black has no pieces left, just try, de desperate trying to pick up pieces. He, he's sort of starving opera pieces here. Um, and this is a complete crush from Yasser and just completely grinding him down, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, yeah, and off ways and resigns. Okay, so it's, at this stage, it's four games to one. Um, to Opera Wazen. Okay, so in game six, Yasser is black. Um, okay, lots of peace sacks from Wazen trying to break through on the queen side. Um, but I think he's running out of pieces again. Um, there's a slight problem. But yeah, he's doing, he's doing okay. Yeah, it's kind of dangerous. He allowed this queen, didn't take the queen. Interesting. He goes straight in for the attack. And still not taking the queen. And yeah, the, it says if you take the queen, still equal. So it goes, goes in for an attack. Okay, queen takes bishop. He wants a bishop. Takes the queen, takes back. Okay, so here, king h1 apparently is best, but what happened was this. Um, okay, he's trying to stay safe on the back. The queen. He wins another queen. Ooh, so it's looking quite dangerous. Again, um, taking the pawn with the queen... Knight takes f7, queen takes f7, another knight replaced on d8 would, looks a bit dangerous, and exactly what he does. And actually, white's in danger of getting the initiative here. Um, so what, what, where did it go wrong? Um, if I just go back a second. Here, bishop takes f6. Bishop takes f6 is very powerful. Uh, for white, and this might might be the turning point, because if you do the natural um, hit t hit back, knight at g4 is both defending and also hitting the queen. Um, actually, in fact, this is a forced mate for white, because um, if you just move the queen somewhere, you have knight takes bishop coming, queen takes, 
bishop, bishop here, and queen here checkmate. So this is a real problem, this knight, knight at g4 idea. Um, and although you have loads of pieces in hand, I mean, it's suggesting moves like, suggesting crazy moves. Um, the, the simple problem is how to defend. Um, even if you just dump another queen on, knight takes queen, queen takes knight, uh, and queen at f7, queen takes f7, and then rook in the corner, king takes, knight takes queen check, uh, king goes back here, knight takes h6 check, keeping you trapped, king goes back, and the, the queen in the, on g8 is made. So this was a very key idea that Opa missed in this position. Um, bishop takes knight. Instead, he does this, and it's quite critical. Um, black is still in control, apparently. Um, and the, yeah, black gets to put a knight on, on f6. I guess the f6 square really is very important to put a knight on that square. And now black has forced mate with the rook at g1. But he's going to play it a bit more slowly. So I show how the forced mate could have happened with... Uh, Rook at g1 or rook at e1 are both mating. So um, if you take it, then we take back. Um, if you take with the rook, then rook here is checkmate. So you have to take with the king, but then we have a pawn on the back rank and we are in on the back rank. Uh, king f2 seems reasonable, because um, otherwise we'll just recycle rooks and you're going to get mated. But then pawn at g3, um, king e2, Maybe rook at f2 just to seal you in. Um, sorry, that's not the best. Rook at f2 um, seals you in perfectly decently. And knight f2 with a discovered mate. So something like this. Um, okay, but Yasa went for a slightly slower mate, just being really solid and grinding his way through as Yasa loves to do. Uh, and offer resigns. So going now to game um, nine, I believe. So this time Yasa is white, playing a... <laughs> okay. <laughs> playing a very interesting... Playing queen d3, <laughs> and then, yeah, punishing c6. I think c6 is... Creates a weakness on c7. Um, and winning the knight. And... This looks really interesting, um, but maybe it's not so strong. Oh, knight here. So what's the idea? The idea is you're threatening knight takes pawn check, but if you just simply take that knight, then you're losing bush takes knight, and you're losing the rook as well. So this is a crazy little move from Opa Wazen. Um, actually, knight e4 is, is, is actually just very nice. These crazy looking moves are not always good. Um, he could have played knight e5 check, um, king goes back, and then take it, and suddenly the, um, the knight is defended by the queen. So that's something she missed. Oh, yeah. So, but Yasser Saruan spotted it, so Yasser Saruan takes back control. So the, the nice looking move, it's a nice idea, but it doesn't quite work. Okay, but let's just quickly play through the game. Um, Oppo with the back rank attack. But, yeah, white controls the center, black's just not developed at all. It's picking up this piece, and yeah, Oppa threw in the towel at this stage. Um, so now going on to game 10. So just quickly playing through. Um, playing through the opening. I want to get up to the live action. Um, okay, so this one offers has successful attack on g7, I think, and and Yasa resigns. Okay, and game eleven was the last one um, before the live action. So here we go. We're almost up to the live action. Um, I should flip the board. 
because we're going to look from the point of view of Jam SSR1 for this. Okay, so this is um, this is a Scandinavian, and this is all the idea of this takes takes and go back to E2 is very standard. Um, and you've got a pawn in hand. White's got a pawn in hand to drop on G5, but uh, Black's got a lot of open lines and fast development um, in the, in these lines. So he's going for f2 straight away, defends. And yeah, white seems to have got quite a lot of compensation already. Um, pawn f2 is strong. Pawn f2, what if just rook h1? Then, then is there a mate? Pawn f2, rook h1. Mm, okay, nothing immediate. But maybe. Knight d5 threatening something. Maybe not. I'm not sure. So this is or knight at f5, it says. Okay, so I, I'm not sure why knight at f5. So yeah, it, it'll be sharp stuff. But he he instead decided to take the rook straight away for free. And then pawn f2, king h1, knight takes g4. And this is quite unclear, this position. Ooh. And Opper finds a quick mate. Um, so the queen's Okay, let's see. So he, he sacks his queen and it doesn't work out. Queen at f1. Not quite sure what he was. He, maybe he thought just queen f1 and then sink back to g1. But knight h3, um, the idea is if the king goes here, rook here is checkmate. King can't sink back to where it wants to. But now if you take this, you have you have a queen in hand. So queen f3, and whichever way the, the king goes. A rook here or here is checkmate. So finally, we are up to live action. This morning I covered 12 games um, precisely, um, but we're now only, um, and this is game 12 for today, so it might be I've just missed almost all the live action, but we'll see. Okay, so again, looking from the point of view of Yasser for this evening session, in the afternoon session, uh, I look from the point of view of Opper Wazen. Okay, so an attack on the bishop and lining up the bishops on f3. Nice exchange, so powerful bishops from black. This is interesting. Queen at e2. Um, what's the idea of that? Just clear the back rank. He wants to... Oh! And he wants a pawn for a back rank attack. And it's Yasa to play. Okay, so we're up to the live action. And I can tell the 25 spectators on Leechus that I am streaming. Oh, it just all it all finished too quickly. Um, <laughs> it all finished too quickly, and I didn't get to didn't get to fully appreciate the. <laughs> I missed the critical moment. Um, Baku says, why am I not featured as a streamer on the Lee Chess homepage? Yes, I've had conversations. So how did Yasser finish this off so quickly? Takes, knight here. Um, so you think f3 is well defended. But the point is, the I've had conversations with Fishy about this. So he's just broken through. Um, queen at h7 is coming. Um, King takes f6, so queen h7, king takes f6, how to finish it off. Um, but instead, okay, he goes to something else. Knight here, check, and I, he, he wants to just finish it off with diagonals. Um, and this is just surely going to win, because if you don't take it, you're going to get mated on g7. But if you do take it, um, so what Offer is doing here is white, is drop, dropping a pawn on f6. Again, you have to take it, and then just dropping, um, could drop a bishop on d4. Or computers suggesting queen. At, he has two queens. Okay, that's true. But just bishop. Okay, simple bishop at, at uh, e five. D takes e five. F takes e five. And he's got two queens in hand. So if the king tries to run, it's not really getting anywhere. You you can save up the queens for here and here. Um, so king d seven. Queen here check. 
king c8, and there's no getting away. So this is a this kind of slow mate, but it'll get there in the end. You can kind of see how it's going to get there in the end. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so just as I joined this game, it kind of ended a little bit too soon for me. Um, so now we're into game 13. Yeah, it's because I'm not one of the players, so it doesn't let... It doesn't... Um, although... Commentary, okay, so we're going to go down this variation. Um, yeah, we, we, you do get commentators on Lee Chess who are featured um, when they're doing commentary, like, for example, during the titled, titled arenas, um, Chess Network gets, gets featured. Um, so, but I think it just requires... Th that's one reason. So it requires something... Um, so it requires... So that's the reason why I'm not getting the, the, the green band saying that I'm streaming, and I have to just let people know. Um, but the reason why I'm not on the on the front page of Lee Chess is because I'm not a title player, and they they I, I need they need to basically set it up that they think my streams are worthy of being featured, um, and. I've actually just recently asked Fishy Vishy if, if that can be done, but I don't know. Um, so just to look at the current game a little, yeah, we're down this little line. Um, what is this move? Um, See, so he desperately wants to stop Queen takes G, uh, B2, I can understand that. But what is it? Why can't the pawn just take the bishop? It seems like Yasser is playing this very creatively. The pawn does take the bishop, but, but at the expense of the queen, I mean, <laughs> this is very creative. Uh, oh, okay, in terms of Crazy House streamers, I can give you a long list. So there's Jan Lee Crazy House, um, there's Mugwort Crazy House, there's Cryptone, C-R-P-T-O-N-E. Um, this is... Okay, so I think he's probably going to... He's probably going to want to castle, because otherwise knight at d3 comes. There's Z-H Bra, Z-H-B-R-U-H-S. And uh, yeah, so I'd encourage anyone... Everyone to subscribe um, to subscribe to all these streams. And there's this guy called Dertin Chem Dude, D-O-E-T-I-N. C H E M, Dutton Chem do D U D E. Um, oh, he really doesn't want to castle. Okay, interesting. Um, and finally, there's there's Helms Knight who streams on Lee Chess. So again, another creative move from Offer um, Knight at G three because you can't take it or Rook takes Rook comes with check. So he's winning a Rook. No, I said Helms Knight doesn't stream on Lee Chess, but she streams on chess.com. Um, and she sometimes streams Crazy House. But yeah, on in terms of Lee Chess, yeah, it, Jan Lee, obviously. Is the, is everyone should subscribe to Jan Lee. Um, and yeah, so just to say, this is the seventh video. Seventh video? Yeah, this is the seventh video in a series. And I just want to share the um, the YouTube link because uh, that's where you can find the the previous six videos in this series of Grandmaster Yasser Seraman training videos with Upper Wazen. Yasser is a big Crazy House fan, as anyone who hangs around Lee Chess knows, because if you can't play a human, he's playing Stockfish 7. Uh, Stockfish 7 is nice because it plays its moves instantly, so you don't need to hang around waiting while it's thinking. Um, and Operation is potentially either him or 12 Teen or GSVC, or maybe someone else, but likely one of those three will be the challenger uh, to Jan Lee in this year's CWC. And if you type in exclamation mark CWC in the chat, you can get information about that. Okay, so uh, Yas has actually got quite a nice attack out of this 
a rather bizarre opening. So I was quite worried about his back rank, just simply, you know, even a rook on the back rank clearing it out. So he drops the queen to really defend his back rank. In the meantime, he's getting in. So he sacks the queen, but he's getting... This is really nice compensation for the queen. He got a piece and the rook. Um, and the king, like with all these pieces, just not developed. This is... He's really... I think he might... Um, he might be punching Oppa here. And I was thinking, hmm. Okay, so this is a good move, just both guarding your own king and attacking. Although the point, it does encourage development, just developing the knight. But maybe Oppa's afraid of giving a knight. Okay, so he's going to come in on the light squares. I, I was wondering if, yeah, maybe earlier in this sort of position. Yeah, maybe just dropping a bishop or something here is just too aggressive. It doesn't quite work with the idea of... Yeah, I think, yeah, this this is too def this is defended anyway. Is, I, I was hoping for a way to break through on d6. Maybe it works, actually. But yeah, maybe bishop... I, can, I just quite like the idea of that, but maybe I'm just in a fantasy. Ooh, nice. And he's going to sack another queen for a piece, but he gets the second piece out of it, so very nice. Really nice play from Yasser here. And mathematically says, instead of wasting your time watching this, just go rewatch something here. Um, yeah, well, it'll, this will be there in the future. So, so uh, that is my that is my YouTube. <laughs> so yeah. Um, this is, but this is live, and it's always exciting to watch something live. Oh my god, what is this creativity? It's, it's <laughs> yes, going for the queen. Uh, I mean, it, it makes me wonder if there wasn't something stronger. But this is nice. And the knight comes in. Okay, f7 is covered. A uh, queen can still land here, but the king is going to... Maybe the, queen's, the king's going to block and then squirrel away on h7. Um... Yeah, this is very nice, because the threat is to take here, drop a knight here, and then queen takes g6 check. So he's going to have to, again, drop knights um, on f8. So so takes, rook takes, oh, rook takes, this is the problem, knight here, check, king here, queen takes g6, checkmate. So so this is a, yeah, so that's why he brings the knight in. He needs to retake with the knight, otherwise he's in real trouble. So but probably take anyway, takes, takes, and... Hmm. Oh, interesting. Well, you could take here now, and then if knight takes, you're taking the queen with check. That feels good. But he doesn't go for that. So he goes for this. So what's the idea? It's a free piece, I guess. <laughs> I think that's the thing. Quite principled about taking pieces that are free. Um, Oh, I quite like the idea of keeping this file open because, but maybe, yeah, if bishop takes g6, maybe the king would just go to h6. Oh, I'm a little bit nervous. Has he left some back rank issues? I think he's safe. Rook. Rook here. I think he's safe, but it's just nervous. Yeah. There's no, if, if he had a, a, a knight, this is mate. Rook drop on f1, king takes, knight here, king goes back to g1, rook f1, checkmate. But I, he, okay, so he, if he's got the king to move, so bishop takes g6, could come in. Or let's see, what else could come in? Rook. He wants to get his queens in. He's kind of playing it very casual. As long as black doesn't have a knight, he's, well, pawn here is... Is a mating threat, so he needs to have a mating threat of his own. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Let's see. What's the mating threat? Knight, knight here. Does that work? I'm trying to see if, if does white have mate if it was white's move. That's that's the real issue. Can can black afford to just okay? Uh, and I couldn't see knight here. Pawn, knight here. Check. Pawn takes knight. Is there anything like with? Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Yes, knight takes pawn check. 
And if queen takes rook here, hmm, not quite sure. I'm thinking of some drop here and get, getting the queen into the action. Okay, so instead he goes this way. That's going to be really dangerous. Now, now black has a knight, so you have to mate him. Um, takes the bishop with check, so that's nice. And yeah, this is surely mate coming. So pawn, pawn takes. You've got a bishop in hand, so you can drop a bishop here. King here and a rook here is checkmate. King runs this way, pawn here is also checkmate. Um, very nice. So I'm just, I'm just going to quickly um, just toggle back a few moves. Um, was at the point when. So here. Knight c6 check is an idea. Queen takes knight here. Yeah, I was thinking knight at c6 check. Yes. Knight at c6 check. I'm not completely I'm not talking complete nonsense. Woohoo. Uh, it is mate in four. So if the king moves, this was obvious that that was mate. So you do absolutely have to take that knight. Okay. And the idea is if you take the knight, um, you're giving the queen some, some leeway. And I was thinking knight takes c6, queen takes c6, if queen takes c6, um, then you can come in. But actually even better is queen a6 first. The idea being um, if king takes b4, then um, what's the idea here? Kind of really subtle idea. Takes and this is far too subtle. Knight c2 is checkmate. Okay, that, that's not what I was thinking at all. Um, and the point is that if if the queen takes, then then knight takes c6, pawn king here, and not 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 there, but just pawn pawn b3. Uh, no, not not pawn b3. Pawn at b3. Very important to cover a3 is checkmate. Um, but anyway, this is not what I was thinking. I was thinking simply knight takes c6. That's the idea. Um, again, if the king moves, rook takes checkmate. So black absolutely has to take it. And then I was being a little bit prosaic and thinking, you know, rook at a6 or something. Um, but this queen a6 idea apparently works. If you go king takes queen, rook here is checkmate. So you absolutely have to go here. And now you can go queen a3 check king here and queen b3 checkmate. Okay, so I think that's slightly prettier than, um, so knight here, check, pawn takes knight, pawn takes knight. Uh, queen a6 is a very subtle mate. This is much simpler. Knight takes, queen takes, queen here. If you take, then rook here is checkmate. If you don't take, then you can come in and that's checkmate. Okay, so it looks like that that might be it after 13 games. Um, um, so, that, and well, okay, so if that is going to be it, then I'm just going to have a, um, a quick look at that, um, at the opening in this, the offer play um, that Yasa played a few times in this series. Yeah, C6, it seems to be not the best move three from black here. Um, e6 would be good. c6 is just asking for an attack on c7. Um, and probably uh, h3 is possible, bishop to d7. And, but actually, so apparently queen b3, yeah, this is selfish at, that deep, uh, at higher depths really likes queen b3, so there's something to it. Um, knight f6 is also possible here, but okay, he moves the bishop, takes the knight. Okay, so in actually what happened in the previous game is he went directly for, no, sorry, he didn't. Um, okay, so you could castle quickly queenside, queenside for white, but um, okay. Good. The problem is this pawn is hanging, which is not ideal. Um, yeah, so bishop b5, so this is crazy. I, I didn't understand this move, and this is the first time this has been played. So, 
and it is indeed Stockfish's favorite <laughs> favorite move in this position. And I'm like, okay, what is the idea? C takes B5. I see you're just undermining the D5 pawn. That's that's all it is. Knight takes D5 with the view of going to C7. Um, yeah, so that was a nice little trick. He then does knight takes d5 anyway. And then, yeah, then the, he loses the queen. So, okay, so this is quite a nice little idea, and white's got a really sizable advantage out of the opening, and he then converted nicely. Um, so just going quickly through. Yeah, so here, what's the best? Just going d uh, d takes c8 equals queen is good. Knight f to d4 is apparently also an idea. But you're coming into the escape square. Um, so this... Yes, I, in this position I think just breaking through is strong, but um, he is just being principled about trying to pick up the free material. Um, and yeah, Oppo was just said in the chat that I was hoping he would Rook, rook, okay, rook takes, takes. Uh, I was hoping he'd play rook a3 at some point. And if king takes b4, then rook takes a8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If rook takes queen, he, they have a mate idea. So in this sort of position, um, if you do something like rook here, check and win the queen, you're actually getting mated because black picks up a knight, and a knight, as we were discussing during the stream, is exactly the position, uh, is, is exactly the piece that black needed. Um, to mate. But yeah, here we'd had a slightly different mate. Ooh, so there's a really nice mate here, which is knight c2 check. King's only got two squares it can go to. Um, and if it goes here, rook at d4 is mate, cutting everything off. And if it goes here, uh, simply pawn at b3 is checkmate. So using that knight, uh, but in fact, just this is fine. Um, yeah, pawn has to take here, and there's nothing. This is bishop at c3, as we said. Yeah, king here, pawn here. Okay, cool. So thanks for watching. It's been um, not so much, not as much a live stream as previous, as previous series. Um, it's been a shorter stream also as, as a result because we've just been trying to catch up with the live action. Uh, and, and no opera and voice chat. If uh, if you check out the previous, some of the previous. Um, uh, series on on my YouTube, and I'll just play, post my YouTube again. Uh, we we've uh, I've actually had Opera in voice chat with me, and if you want to join in the discussion, um, do join uh, the Discord, where we talk about uh, variants like Crazy House a lot, and where Opera is very active. So you can you can join in the discussions. Um, so yeah, do join the House Discord. It's a great place, and um, m most of the videos I do. Uh, crazy house, but I occasionally do normal chess and puzzles. Um, and probably the the most important thing I do is the uh, apart from this is the I try and do some commentary for the Crazy House World Championship, which is ongoing. And uh, I also, uh, uh, yeah. So that and if you want to improve your Crazy House, they're on the blog. This, at the top, there's something called Guide to Crazy House. So it's just, just leaving some links in case people are interested. Um, there's a Guide to Crazy House, so you can, and there are lots of links within that blog to places to get better at Crazy House. But uh, Cool. Okay, so thanks for watching, everyone, and uh, good night. It's, late, it's an hour later in Holland, so that's why they had to stop. So we have to stop too. Bye.